But they changed the courthouse, huh? Back to roof leaks over there. Back in the carpets. Same thing. I'll be home. That went out and they went back. I'm not going to go on the tour because I'm not going to be here Thursday. Good pay, good place to stay. <laughs> Take a look at the white, look at the young white oaks. Guys beating it on those tables. You're looking at the young white oaks. Moisture. Well, there's a lot of moisture up in the eastern end of the county. Yeah. 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 Farmers hurting this winter. Yeah, a lot of action. A lot of cattle going, a lot of machinery. They just uh, we got two almonds in Richard. We're going to put in a wall. Squeaky, I heard the other day. Big one. Pretty good. He's about as tight as two boats. I didn't think he'd ever swim through that. And then, uh, well, I guess the name Richard is down on Rotor down there on that old uh, rental farm. Yeah. We're going to put in a wall. How's the Schmudlock Creek? Is it still running? Still running. Sure, you can shut it. Pleasant Lake wanted to do that. They wanted to put a big well in and then they can pipe it back in. <laughs> <It's all stupid. laughs> Is it because they're working on the roofs? We finally get rain. Thank you. I look up and say you being conservative. They're milking 1200 and so they might have to sell some of them. I really heard that uh, two brothers down there. Was excellent. Young Bob was there too. Oh, yeah, I think they did. <laughs> Poor Captain. Oh, you guys, you, you could volunteer to work in that booth anyway. Can I? I will. I'll work in it. Well?
plug in the sea? Um, my office is dry, but um, all of our files are all stored in, in across the hall. We kind of detail some of those, maybe the boxes or something. Rained in? Really? It got rained in? Yeah, I think the gutter is still there. Oh. Yeah. Okay, let's, whoops, sorry guys, let's call the meeting to order. All right, um, we'll have a roll call. Mrs. Krentz. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Tim. Here. Mr. Piaski. Here. Mr. Eckstein. Here. Mr. Weddy. Here. Mr. Pallotta. Here. Mr. King. Here. Mr. Wadel. Here. Mr. Crawford is excused. Mark Kirshner. Yep. Okay, we'll have silent prayer and pledge of allegiance, and I think we should say a little something extra for Larry Crawford's wife, so we can get a good recovery for her. Allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right, we'll move on to public comments, and we have Ruth Spelsky making a public comment. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we need a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make that motion. Second, Second it. Okay, we have motion by Dennis, second by Bob Wado. Um, any, <laughs> any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, now we will move on to the approval of minutes of the June 19th, 2012 meeting. So moved. Motion by Joan. Yeah. Second by Krenz. We have a motion, a second. Do we have any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
We have no old business. We'll go right to new business, and we're going to start with a report on the bonding projects update. Thank you very much, Ruth. All right, we have some presentations tonight. Um, Community Health Improvement Plan, Bridget Daly, AmeriCorps in, member and at the health, Public Health Department. Addie, is it the chip where it says chip? Is that the PowerPoint you want? Okay. Right here? Right here? And you're okay with advancing the I'd be happy to. Anything from the air quality to the food that you eat to your activity level, 
number of births per 1,000 females is 16.8. So that's a percentage, but um, a majority of those are percentages that we see up there, and to me, it says to me that um, some of them are at least or around a quarter of the percentage of the time. So when you look at these numbers, these are just a sampling of what we look at for correlation with mean health improvement. So when you compare the state correlation,
Thank you, Bridget. Does anyone have any questions for Bridget? I do. So you go to the Get Active Guide online. Do you go through Washera County, the Washera the County the website? It's on the health Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we have another presentation from Golden Sands Resource Conservation and Development Council Cooperative Programs 40th Anniversary Celebration and Amy Thorsenstead. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, thanks for giving me a couple minutes tonight um, on behalf of the council um, I had three different things to update you with and the first thing was a short uh, four-minute video that we had put together that does a really good job of explaining it gives an overview of what we do at Golden Sands RC and D um, could you hit the maximize full screen button and up here this one um, Will that do it oh I can't tell where you are it's on the black bar on the bottom it's the, the farthest right it's like um, a broken spring. Oh, sorry, under where the play button is, all the way on the opposite end. Next one, there you go. And now we'll see it bigger. And then the play button's on the bottom left there. Thank you. Oh, are there speakers still up? Oh. Um, would the refresh? Come right over here if you would like to play with us. <laughs> you won't hurt my feelings. I thought that would be the easiest way to do it is to pull it up on YouTube. Um, refresh. That is awesome. <laughs> computer. Brand 
listening to? Um, so I, I apologize that there's a little technical difficulties, um, but it does give it, it's on our website, um, and I can maybe share the link, and that could be shared with the group. Um, we had the video made in uh, honor of our 40th anniversary. Our C and D is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. Um, we were created in 1972, and what the video kind of goes over briefly is we the fact that we were created by um, leaders in conservation of that time and who the video was talking about was what they used to call the soil and water conservation districts which was the um, land conservation committees of yesteryear uh, for the county board so um, the video highlights the fact that we were created by the counties um, it was the counties that created resolutions to create us uh, to create the organization um, and it's your delegates on the um, on our council um, who serve on the board and make sure that our c and stays true to what the county's um, conservation needs are. Um, so we really are an entity of the, of the counties um, and steered by the counties. Um, and the, uh, so the projects that we um, take on, wildlife, forestry, waters, those kinds of things are, reflect the needs um, that we have in our membership counties, including Washera County. Um, so that was kind of the gist of the video. Um, but anyway, so our 40th anniversary that we're celebrating is, um, it's kind of an all year long event that we're promoting ourselves a little better than normal. We're a bunch of science geeks, so we aren't very good at, um, you know, tooting our own horn and getting ourselves out in the newspaper and that kind of thing. Um, but our main event is the banquet on the 18th. Um, and so we're having a big celebration banquet in Amherst at the Jensen Center, the Jensen Community Center. If you're familiar, it's a very nice community building. Um, and we will have Central Waters Brewery um, there uh, to have my, uh, local microbrews there. Um, we'll also have a local winery um, present and um, a little bit of entertainment. And so our tickets are on sale now either by um, by phone or uh, you can go to our website to order tickets, um, but you'll all be getting an invitation, a personal invitation in the mail. So um, I, I look forward to having some of you join us and um, celebrate and uh, have a night of fellowship in honor of conservation with us. Um, and then the last little item that I had for you um, was an update on the Prairie Chicken Festival, which is one of our um, cornerstone events. It's a huge outreach. Um, event and so I brought with you um, the newsletter on behalf of Sharon Schwab who runs the festival. Um, her uh, newsletter always highlights uh, what's happening and this one has the wrap up of the Prairie Chicken Festival. Um, so I'll just pass those on over.
So this, the summary in the newsletter um, highlights some of the different events that took place. There were events that um, were for, uh, to engage the youth. Um, we had a lot of students go into the blinds. There were a couple of classrooms that went into the prairie chicken viewing blinds. And then they had a poster contest. They kind of drew what they saw. And then the, the awards for the poster contest were handed out at the festival grounds on, on that Saturday. Um, so there were events to engage the youth and pull them into wildlife conservation. There were also, uh, of course, events for adults. Uh, we had 175 adults, or well, adults and youth, go into the blind, so 175 people. 50% um, of that was local people that went in the blinds, which is excellent because we want local landowners engaged in the concepts of grassland conservation and preserving prairie chicken habitat. Um, but we also had people come in from all around the world, including um, China, um, I forget where some of the others were. There were a couple different countries, Canada. Um, we had them from Texas. From, we always have people come from New York. Um, birders come from worldwide to see these birds because they really are um, becoming more scarce and this is one of the only places that you can see them. Um, and our, one of our highlighted speakers at the event was um, the fellow that's on this bookmark, Napadal Patong, is how you say his name. Um, he is a, an award-winning photographer. He came to shoot photos at the Buena Vista Marsh, and he, his book is coming out soon. That's what the bookmark um, tells you about. Um, and in this book are photos that he took at our local, you know, the Buena Vista Marsh and, and Paul J. Olson wildlife areas, including an albino prairie chicken which um, I don't know that it's ever been documented, but there was one this year sighted at the Buena Vista Marsh, and so he got photos, and that's included in his book, and his book is coming out soon. So, um, so that was kind of exciting to have uh, such a big name photographer at, you know, in the photographer's circles um, at our event. Um, so we had 175 people go in the blinds. Um, somewhere between 250 to 300 participated in the event overall. It's really hard to get exact numbers on that. Um, but it was a very successful year. The weather cooperated wonderfully. You know how April can be. Um, so it was another good year for the Prairie Chicken Festival. So, um, so that was basically my update. Again, sorry about the video not going, and I'll try and remember to send a link so folks can catch up on that if they would like to. So thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have Everett? questions? Oh. Carol and I were two of the... 175 that got a chance to uh, <coughs> view the prairie chickens this spring. And any of you that haven't been out there, it's a real kick. Uh, we sat there for, for two hours just enthralled. Uh, th there was a uh, uh, harrier that uh, also was uh, chasing them <laughs> out, and then they came back, and then out, and came back. Um, that video is fantastic. Uh, Ed uh, Fernandez was on there for a while, and it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we will make it a point to have it at one of our meetings because it is well worth it. It, it does, it describes so well uh, what Golden Sands does as far as uh, uh, helping with uh, uh, going to uh, lakes uh, to uh, show the different invasive species and things like that, all kinds of uh, good stuff. It yeah, it's amazing. Really, what he really well worth it. Yeah, he packed a lot into four minutes for us. It was really well done. Thank you for mentioning it. Any other questions? Thank you, Amy. Thanks again for your time. Okay, we have some uh, discussion and possible action items. And uh, I think you got information in your packets concerning the executive committee uh, minutes and some background on these things. Now, um, we'll first we'll take the 2013 budget directives. Um, one of the things that the executive committee had talked about at the last meeting is, you know, they were a little hesitant to put in a zero, just to tell everybody that they had to stay at zero. They wanted the departments to do the best that they could. So, you know, again, you guys are the ones that'll have to actually set these directives for all the departments. Um, Donna Teschner was instructed to look at a five-year history of the departments that have reserves, all right? So I, Donna is here tonight, and I don't, did everybody get a copy of this? Okay, so 
If Donna, Ms. Teschner, if you would please explain your, uh, your, your uh, Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Starting with Commission on Aging, it shows your budgets for 2007 through 2011 and the year-to-date revenues and expenses and then how much was returned to her fund balance per year. And then that darkened line there, 1,731, that's the total to the five. And then in yellow, that'll show you your five-year average. So looking at this, she wouldn't be hurt by reducing her budget by 10,000. 305, or that's her leeway. Um, that's the average she returned, five-year average that she returned each year. So you could possibly have her go from 355 to 345. And underneath that is uh, human services. There again, um, I forgot to mention under that 1231-2011 column, year-to-date fund that 76384 is what Deb has in her reserve. Um, human Services, his, their reserve is 1927091187 There's something else you can think about if you want to leave that all in there under that department or put back into surplus or whatever, and their return to fund balance average for five years is 263,214. So they could go from 2,509 to 2,246. And the only difference with EMS is they first started in 2009 allowing them, they had 115,000 that they could have put back into surplus and executive allowed them to keep 31,997. So those three after approved with the asterisk and under two, that's that total that comes up to their 323,306 that they have in their designated, undesignated fund. And we added, instead of just taking the 115 from the 916, we added the 231,424 on there because that's what you guys approved last year that he would, EMS would be paying for half of dispatch. So, in, um, <coughs> so instead of 916 minus the 115, we added that 231 in there so that he doesn't get messed up. And he can go from, <laughs> 1,147,000 down to 1,032,000. Um, if you make all three of them do the totals there that could be reduced, the total of savings would be 388,863. Does anyone have any questions for Donna? Where's the 388,816, where's that on this spreadsheet? What? That total savings that you said was 388,816? Oh, it's not on there. I thought of that after we had them printed. <laughs> I'm oh. sorry. It's, if, if you add up the um, return to fund balance totals, the 10,305,52 average, the 263,214,52, and the 115, 343, 72. So you come up to the 388, 863, 76. Now that's just an average. That's not a guarantee that that's what they've been putting back every year, but. That's a five year average. Yeah. So we were trying not to hurt them. We're trying to show that they had they have a little extra levy that they probably don't need so that's what this was about and you can have them start using up their fund balances to offset their budget if they say you know i need this 916,000 that i had last year 
and, and you say, well, you still got to reduce it by 10, they can use part of their fund balance to reduce that. Now, was that uh, 231, 424 actually used for uh, EMS dispatch? It's supposed to be half the 911 dispatch. Was that used or not? Yes, it's being applied to the, that will, expense, yeah. yes. Doesn't have anything to do with uh, emergency medical dispatch. No. It gets. Don't have yet. Correct. No. It's purely pay paying for the expense of dispatch. Okay. The staff, the, just it the regular expenses. It helped with the budget last year. Yeah. Extra cushion. Does that mean that? Um, that EMS it will get will put the same amount into the dispatch center this year, or was that a one-time thing? You know, where no, we, we have that set up now. Well, you if you discontinue that, basically the, the sheriff's department, their budget would have to go up that just, just to stay flush. Mm -hmm. And so the way the state has their rules set up is that you have flexibility in what you do with an EMS levy, an ambulance levy, you don't have that same flexibility with the Sheriff's Department. So we were able to justify, we took how many calls dispatch had and how many of them were directly related to the ambulance and we used that ratio and, and that's how this number, we came up with this number. So we could justify it to the auditor. So that, that would, I, it's always your decision, but <coughs> that, that could stay the same amount of funding. You wouldn't have to adjust that particular number you would just de adjust the, the total. Uh, we still, we don't have emergency, committal, emergency medical dispatch at this point, that's correct. Now, how will that affect this budget when we get that? And I'm hoping we get that soon. I know it's kind of so the sluggish issue. It's gonna be charged every month. One, one twelfth of this 231 is being charged EMS right now. That if you're talking about that EMDC or? Uh, I think they're talking about emergency medical dispatch. So it's a software program that the sheriff um, talked about last month that he had some concerns that he didn't have sufficient staffing and that he was working on lots of different projects and that's why it hasn't been implemented yet. So that's what you're talking about, correct? So what you're telling me is in order to have EMD, we have to have more staff. No, we're not, we're not, we're not saying that. I'm saying that it doesn't, that EMD costs are not directly related to what your staff costs are with the technology to pay for the software to pay for the upgrade of the software. We have the software and can't use it then. Correct. It has not been implemented yet, yes, it that is true. Been decided, I think, in the Correct. So that would be the first directive, I guess, for the executive committee and for the department heads. If, if you want them to use that five-year average for the three mentioned areas that do have those reserves that are able to be applied towards the budget. So that would be one of the things that you need to think about. Um, some of the other things that were talked about is that um, all the departments need to maximize their revenues. They need to look at their revenue sources and adjust their fees and, and look to make sure that they're current on, on those type of things. Um, the state, the employee trust fund, generally by June they give us the number for the percentage for the retirement for next year. Um, they have not done that yet. They are giving us a range. Currently it's 5.9%. They're saying it's going to be anywhere from 6.4% to 6.85%. And so the committee talked about it, you know, how should we start budgeting for that because we really don't know when they're going to give us that number. And so um, being the conservative group we are, you know, it was indicated that we should budget for the 6.85% um, and just to be on the safe side. A previous month we had talked a little bit about uh, do we try to work in increases for 
our employees, um, and that was the prior month, and they talked about we should try to work in some increases, and they, the number that they suggested was 1.5%. So I guess we need to know what your wishes are, uh, what sort of directives do you want us to give the department heads as they prepare these budgets for 2013? So we're all ears now. Have the department heads been uh, given this option yet, uh, this, these figures? No, you are seeing this first. <coughs> I guess I would like to have the department heads look at this too. Um, they have to work with the figures. Well, I agree we really need some guidelines, though. Yeah. I agree with you, and this was kind of an FYI. Uh -huh. You know, and so you're right. The department heads do need to see it, and, you know, and then we can go from there. But, but this was, uh, you know, we wanted you to see. I'm on, I, underst I understand that. I know that's a huge amount there, yeah. but I always think back to what happens if five or six individuals move in the county that are thirty thousand dollars a piece per month. Yeah. You know, the county, the county is on the hook for this, not uh, not human services, okay. the county. Okay, I thought maybe it had to be. We had to have that much of a cushion there. You're being kind. That's right. <laughs> you know, we don't want to take away incentive for, for departments to do well, I guess is what we're saying. But on an average, if the department has not needed that much levy money, can you really justify giving them that much levy money? You know, and that's kind of where we're coming from. I like the point you made about taking away the incentives mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. We don't want to, we want to keep our, we only have so much levy to work with. I understand right. that. So if we can not give levy grants to the districts, give them the surplus funds, we can use that for other things. Otherwise, we need to start talking about which programs are being cut. Right. And maybe that's the conversation you want. I'm not sure. I'm just asking for budget directives. So, um, but we really, we really, it is July. We need, we need to know what, what kind of your at least rough expectations are. I think this whole this whole thing is a good idea, and I really think you know we need to let the department heads look at it too, you know, but uh, they don't have the final say anyway. Correct. But they might have some input here or there that needs to be considered. And they and they will always have that chance to bring it back to you. Send them my question. If they run short, they could come back to the county board right. if they levy, right? <coughs> or they can tap more into their surplus. And I. You know, and I don't think any of us are interested in, you know, we don't want it, the departments to see it as a punishment because, you know, they've done a good job. And, uh, you know, and, and, and on the other hand, we don't want to reward departments that aren't watching their budget maybe as, or, or have had some outer line spending. I, mean, I wouldn't say outer line spending, but, you know, it, it seems like, well, we don't want to. We don't want to reward anybody who hasn't stuck by their budget. So it's so I don't want the ones that do to think that's what we're doing it, because it's not. Does that make sense? <laughs> A little bit. Mm -hmm. 
but I, I do need to get, we need to get budget worksheets out and we need, we need people to have some sort of an idea of what you are going to want them to do. Um, and so for many, many, many years, it has been zero for, for a majority of the departments. And it's to the point that you will either need to start looking at programs and cutting programs, or you are gonna have to give some of these departments some cushion. There are some departments that all they really have are salary and benefits. You know, everything else in their budget is so minuscule that even if you cut out all the pens and pencils and paper, I mean, you know, some of them are to that point. There just is nothing left to cut. And so this, by, by doing this, you might provide some cushion that some of these smaller departments, that that's all they have for their programs our salary and benefits and very small um, operating budgets, it'll give you a little cushion that they can actually have the what they need. And we're not talking about a ton of money, but what they need to, to keep going at the same level. I can understand that. I just I just want the the departments that do have the cushions here to realize that we're, they're not being punished Correct. here. And in that um, they're able to build up a cushion when there's, as you said, there's departments that are bare bones already. <coughs> and they need something. Right. Well, but on the other hand, you haven't let every department build up a cushion. The rest of the departments at the end of the year, well, there's money left in their budget. It goes back to the general fund. Correct. So not all the departments, so excuse me, not all the departments have the ability uh, to get revenues either, do they? Correct. That so is true. that's part of it. That mm -hmm. is part of it. But there are other departments other than these three who have come in under budget and there at that money has gone back into the general fund not into a secondary reserve account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean really in the big scheme of thing that that is excellent budgeting. That yeah. that is excellent budgeting. Okay, do we have any other discussion? I have some guidelines. Any questions? Got something for us, Joe? I think we talked about it before, trying every department to get to the zero budgeting. And I think working with this sheet, I think we need to try to do that, do the best they can and apply this. And if there's questions or issues, I think we need to come back to county board and discuss it. And if they're short, tell us why. And we always have that opportunity. I think that I, my, my thoughts today in meeting was all departments should bring all their excess money back to general fund. And if you need something, you ask. Instead of doing this, I think this is probably a better way. They can keep their cushions in there and they can keep their extra money in there. They all do good budgeting, but I think that's what we should try to do is go to the zero the best we can. And if you have to go up, you have to go up. You have to justify why though. So, so all the departments, you. so I'm hearing two different things here. You're saying stay at zero, but you're not really holding them to zero because if they. Well, we had the, we had the issues last year with Scott and his dumping fees. What do you do when you get a $100,000 increase? You have to do it. Okay. So I guess that's the point that if they have to, they have to justify why they're raising. So they don't, so if they have a line item that has to go up, they just have to be able to justify why. I would think that would work. Okay. That's my opinion. Okay. 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 We never discussed that really. How do we do that with salary and benefits? I don't know if there's enough cushion for salary and benefits this year or not. Well, this, this would help. I mean, this, this would help if you make those departments stay at those levels of levy that will help because they can apply some of their reserves to keep it static. I think your six year or five year average here shows the average of what they put in. I think you did a good job on it. I think that's the number we should try to stay with if we can do that. Average. Yeah. 
average. Anybody else? Will someone put something in a motion <laughs> so I have something to give to department heads? Yes, I'll make that motion that, that we go with this here and try to stay as close to 10 to zero. And if we have any issues, come back to county board and we'll discuss it. We have to keep this process moving. It's, mm -hmm. We can't wait till October, November to do it. Okay. So I'll make the motion. So is it is it fair then to say that salary and benefits can somehow be looked at separately? I don't know. Okay. So if, there's, if a department has an extenuating circumstance, um, you mentioned the, the dumping fees or tipping fees, um, somebody loses some major revenue source, they just have to bring that to the home committee's attention, at least start there and it'll eventually go to executive. I would think because there's some departments that can't cut anymore where they're at now, they just can't. And some years we've gone with salary and benefits included, some years we've had them separately. I don't know what the right way to do it is. Okay. Does that just go to from there to executive or to the entire county board? Well, generally what happens is executive puts like a product together and then that comes to the full county board. <coughs> right. So, um, right. So ex at some point you have to tell executive what you want that number, that bottom number to be. Do you want them to be able to go to the allowable max? You know, at some point we need to know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Your motion is back to uh, keep each one of these at the average, at the five year average. I thought, yes. Does that affect all budgets or just these three? These three are the ones that. I know, but you're. Everybody else come in at a zero, as close as you can to a zero. I don't know. Yeah, but you're, I'm not sure I understand. The reserves that we can tap. You're saying that they would all come in at zero, but only these three would be affected by the five year average. Because they're the only ones that have the surplus. The other ones are all zero with oh, no, sur no, no surplus hmm. funds. Okay. They all turned it back down to the county revenue, only general fund. Will, will they be able to keep their reserves? Is that That's what, what the thought is now, that they would keep their reserves but try to go to that average. And then they can apply from their reserves. More. If they, they need to apply more. some, they can. They have to come to the county board to apply for the reserves? Um, actually, it, it's a line item in the budget yeah, the that where they apply. Mm -hmm. And then that, that whole thing, that whole document comes to the county board for approval. So, okay. so the scenario is if they're, if they're $5,000 short, they can apply more from their own surplus. I understand that. So you're saying then in your motion, and there's no second, I don't know why we're discussing that, but anyway. You're saying that each department then should stay right at what they were budgeted last year. Is that what you're saying in your motion, Joe? No, if they were budgeted last year. I'm asking Joe. <laughs> I'd like to see that happen. because then they would continue to build a reserve. If 
I guess in our discussion, the only other thing I think we could do is all reserves re revert to general fund, and if they need some more money, they come to the county board and ask for it, like they used to use, used to do. If you were short, you come to the county board and say, I need this much more money, and the county board would approve it or not approve it. I think it's easier to do it this way, the way the sheet is laid out to us. To keep their reserves and use them, utilize them. <coughs> this isn't taking it away from them. No. Then it's not helping out the other departments that may need it. The it surplus. would help the other departments. Would you take this um, return to fund balance average five year amount to the NIC of ten thousand zero five two? The two thousand and twelve budget is three fifty five four twenty. If you hamper the <coughs> So Donna, basically, it was about 380,000. That's about, so you would have that $388,000 that you would be able to distribute in other areas and still stay at the same funding level as 2012, if that makes sense. Because you would have that much of a cushion. You would have that cushion that you could, you know, help cover the costs of increased salaries, increased benefit costs, loss of, some program revenue, you know, things of those those nature, and then you would still stay at the 2012 levy limit or levy, if that makes sense. You can leave that there. And well, what if you look at this? If you look at this form, so you could, so you could say to Department of Aging that their levy will be 345, 114, 48, and they do what they need to do with that. If, they, if they're all there, when they get done at adding and subtracting and coming up with their total, if they say, okay, I got, I can't quite make it, then they can go to the 76,000 and apply some of that to their budget to, to balance it. And it would be the same all the way down the line. So same with um, human services. So they would get $2,246,494. They do all their budget. If they have to apply some money, they can apply from the $1.9 million that they have in reserves. That's basically yes. I think that's what he's saying. Okay. <laughs> um, Larry. Is my understanding this would be just a one-year fix? Are they going to do it again? We don't know. Yes. I cannot, I cannot tell you that at some point in time you you might have to make some program decisions. I mean, we we've, we've been putting that off for a long time, but I cannot guarantee you that at some point in time we're going to have to make those really tough decisions. So, okay, I think we need to. Uh, can you read Joe's motion because we do need a second or so. Uh, you can or justify why this is part of extenuating circumstances why and the three departments in the worksheet obviously it's going to be phrased better but the three departments in the worksheet come in at the five-year average budget for their requests and the, and they're allowed to keep the reserves Joe, is that your motion? <laughs> pretty much 
We need a second, though. You have to read it before we get done. Okay, Mark is just going to second. I guess my only concerns from the meeting was I remember when everybody turned their excess money back to the general fund and asked for it. And if this doesn't work, then that's a big thing we're probably going to have to look at is everybody returns their surpluses to the surplus fund. And if you need 10000 or 40000 you ask the county board to take it out of reserves and give it back to you. And they used to do that all the time. All the money excess was always to be turned back to general fund. Yeah. But I, like I said, I, I remember, and I don't remember when it changed, that if you had a surplus in your year's budget, it all went back to general fund. I've been on this board for about 28 years. Well, then you remember more than I do, because, and you would, but that's, I, I, and I remember our department saying if we had $8,000 left, we have to give it back. Yes, everybody does. The majority of us do. Well, not all, though. See, There's just the few. Well. <laughs> And then there, there are, I mean, we have, what, 30 or 40 reserve funds, yeah. but some of them are really specific to a program or these are, these are the ones that are more general in nature. I think okay. we have to try something. <laughs> now they're going to be saving $388,000. Or we will be if we hold them to this five-year average. Um, I guess I would like to be able to tell these departments that this $388,000 won't go to other departments that don't budget as well. Well, if you're if you're applying it to salary and benefits, and you're trying to keep them hold them somewhat harmless in salary and benefit increases, you will use every penny plus some of that money, and so it would be distributed everywhere. Right. So. Everywhere, meaning even back to the departments where this is coming out of. Yeah, it does. Cause yeah, it would. Because you don't, you don't really, it's like a puzzle. You don't really know the bottom line impact until you get all the revenues in and all the expenses in. So you really don't know how far off the mark you are until you put all of that together. So, so do they need to apply money from their reserves? We're not going to know until they actually put it together. <laughs> yes, li Larry. Do, you, do we have uh, budget limits set by the state for the county? What are they? It was, uh, wasn't it um, zero except for, because we're on the second year of the, the budget cycle. So it wasn't a zero except for, um, yeah, or equalized value change, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so this would be, this would give you that cushion. I, I, I'm almost guessing that the equalized valuation for the county will, will, will decrease this year, you know? Maybe not a lot, but it will decrease. Hmm. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any more discussion? Did anybody from the department heads want to weigh in? We got some department heads out there, don't we? Here's your chance. Go for it. <laughs> Got the microphone? Bill, you're so shy. Come on up. Uh, this actually kind of took me flat-footed. I was uh, really surprised to see this report and. Uh, Mr. Whitey, I'm really glad you brought that up um, because I do think it's important that department heads get a chance to weigh in with their with their committees uh, to discuss 
why those surpluses are there um, and potential future uses um, for those cushions. I'm one of the those you know two person departments that I'm bare bones, I'm salary and benefits. Um, if I lose the operating portion of my budget, it's literally okay, I can't afford paper. You know, uh, so this surplus thing doesn't really affect me except when I'm looking at it as a whole picture county thing as um, boy if I do if we do have a 1.5 percent do I buy pens or chalk um, because that's where that increase is going to have to come from is internal um, I don't know if these numbers because I haven't seen them or how they were calculated if they take into account uh, the uh, departments that don't show a, a huge surplus in that at the end of the year maybe that our our access was rolled into the general fund um, so I don't I don't <coughs> know how that's weighed out you know if I was five hundred dollars under my budget last year is that showing up as a surplus for me or is that just rolled into the general fund it's really it's only the three departments that have general reserves so it's aging Department of Human Services and EMF those are the only three that this applies to and those are separate lines from general funds set aside Correct. specific okay Correct. all the rest of us you're what if you had surplus left it got plugged into general fund unreserved that's it okay and I think that might be presenting to the board a little inaccurate picture of good versus bad budgeting um, because really it's not showing up here um, maybe I was under budget last year that doesn't mean that those folks who are under budget and have the surplus are bad or good at budgeting no. it mm -hmm. just means they have a surplus Yes, this certainly isn't a reflection of good or bad on any department. It is not. We're just trying to figure out some way to cushion the blow. Otherwise, the next step is you make program cuts. That is the next step. There is nothing left if you don't find a cushion. This could definitely be a cushion um, when we're looking at, you know, if we are looking at personnel raises, so. <coughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, I have a lot of respect for you know this conversation and the decisions that you have to make. Um, and anyone who knows me knows that I try very hard with the budget. Um, just the the this term cushion being used is a little bit uh, maybe not the right term to use because it makes it sound as though we have purposely cushioned the budget. To me, when when I look at this scenario of what you're talking about. Um, there's no difference to me as to if our department came in under budget versus if somebody else's came in under budget, but their money went into the general fund and ours went into the special fund. Quite frankly, I don't even know why our money goes into a special fund versus the general fund. I only learned about it a couple years ago myself, and uh, so I didn't even know it was being separated that way. Um, but any department that comes in under budget, they're in the same situation that we're in and that they you know, had more county levy than what they needed to request for that year. But there are oftentimes reasons, really good reasons why that happens. And most of it, at least in my case, is because of staff shortages. When you have a staff shortage, anyone knows that you're at least three months without that person or that position being filled. And that can save a lot of money in one year. Or somebody adds on to health insurance or somebody drops off of health insurance. And just that alone can be Twelve to fifteen thousand dollars, right there, just that fast of a savings if somebody goes off of health insurance. So, to just look at this as a, this is a you know like a trend that Debbie is budgeting ten thousand dollars more than she needs every year. I don't think that we do that. We try to be very tight, um, and I don't really see the difference be between the other budgets that don't have this special fund coming in under budget and those of us that have this special fund. So that would be all that I would say, other than. I'm doing my best, and I plan on coming in at zero, hopefully again, and uh, and we'll go from there. Oh, and one other thing would be that 
what happens after five to seven years when this fund money is used up? Now we're in a deficit. For me, maybe I can absorb 10,000 and, and stick with that, but a 380,000 or whatever that number was, that's a huge deficit for a department to have to, to have to absorb. So I would look at that as well. I'm Highway. My department is opposite of Bill's. We're not all um, salary and benefits. We're a lot of materials. Uh, I've been commissioner almost 13 years, and we were buying asphalt for $12 a ton, and now it's 43. I paid less than a dollar for fuel uh, since I've been commissioner, and we all know what that looks like now. And as we've talked about earlier, there has been most years 0% increase or just wages and benefits, and that's the way it's been for the 12 or 13 years that I've been highway commissioner. So I can cut, my cutting of programs is what I've been doing for the last 13 years. What is, my buying power keeps going down, my money stays the same, but we can't get as much for it. So we're paving less roads, uh, we've cut staff already, and we're looking at that again this year. Um, so I guess, <laughs> I hate to say this out loud, I'm used to it and whatever you guys do will we'll make work because we have to. But I, I guess the, the thing that would be most important to me would be to work on getting that 1.5% raise for the, the employees. You know, try to figure that in somehow. Uh, they took financial cuts, I think my department more than any, with the Walker uh, issues and the changes that were made uh, because of the new laws, which we had no control over, you and I, uh, but uh, I would really like to see us try to get that one and a half percent worked in for the employees. Um, and I don't want to say how because I don't want to step on another department's toes, uh, surpluses and not surpluses. The one thing I will say um, to get it out in the open is that Highway does not turn their funds back over when we're not, uh, when we're under budget by statute, highway keeps their funds. But when we're over budget, which we have been because of winter, which is something we can't control, we've been 250,000 over budget in one year. Um, we don't come back to the county board and ask for that money. That, that uh, comes out of our own, our own money. So uh, we're a different animal than what you're hearing from these other departments, but uh, it's, we're all one big happy family, so you guys have got a tough job to figure out how to make this work. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yes, Everett. Um, I think what Debbie said is valid as far as uh, it's nobody's fault because that they might have more and that these are our permanent surplus and that they had other times as far as um, you know, 
entirely right about the insurances and things like that, and she has no control over that. But I'm going to vote for this just because of, of what you've said. This is something that we have to do. And, and uh, I'm hoping it doesn't hurt anybody, but um, there's people out there that are hurting, and they're taking your money. And, and we just have to be as close as we can. We just have to bite the bullet. Okay, we have a motion and a second, and it's time for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 One roll call, please. I'll okay, roll call. we'll do roll call. Mr. Jones, it's your turn tonight. Mr. Jones. No. Mr. Kim. Aye. Mr. Piaski. Aye. Mr. Eckstein. Aye. Mr. Weddy. Aye. Mr. Solana. Aye. Mr. King. Aye. Mr. Wadle. Aye. Mark Kirshner. Aye. Mr. Prince. All right, we'll move along to the capital improvements line item transfer policy. All right, so <coughs> this is the next part of this discussion is that um, there have been some concerns about departments um, perhaps overspending and, and um, so one of the discussions was do we need to go back to some of the controls that were in place years ago um, where a committee had to approve a certain amount of, like a capital purchase. If the amount was over a certain amount, it had to be approved by the department or by the committee prior to any purchase or purchase order being made. Um, another thing that they talked about is line item transfers. If you can picture the budget in your mind, we have you know a salary line item, a health insurance line item, a capital purchase line item. You have everything's very specific line item, and so um, years ago there was a you know we if you wanted to transfer capital purchase money to help pay health insurance, you had to go to the committee and actually specifically have that approved by the committee. We actually stopped doing that because, quite honestly, I don't think I witnessed one time when the Home committee said no you can't do that quite honestly so it was seemed like a lot of paper pushing and the outcome of it really wasn't very effective all right and so I'm not I'm not really a big proponent of this because the people who are going to follow the rules are going to follow the rules no matter what so if you say you can't go over in your budget they're not going to go over in their budget unless they come to you and say I have a specific issue. They're telling their home committee, I have a specific issue. This is the problem, you know. So this is, this is paperwork. That's all this is. Um, and so I don't know if it's going to be effective or not. But the, the first part of it is a capital purchase. If it's over a certain value, does it have to come to the committee prior to any purchase being made or any um, purchase order being issued? So that would be the first question. And then if you say yes to that question, what is the magic number? At what, what is the threshold? When do you want the departments to talk? And I think if you think about your home committees, my guess is you are having these conversations. So, you know, there might be some that don't because maybe they don't think that that's a necess necessity. But I, I think that the home committee can clear some of this up without having a lot of mandates. So that would be the first question. C capital purchases, do they have to come to the committee? And if they do, what's the threshold? Certainly you're not going to want it for small ticket items. Fixed assets, they don't even go on the fixed asset inventory unless it's 2000 or more. So for that piece of information. Do you have any questions? Do you have a motion? Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the byline revision. To approve what? The I'm line item transfer the policy. The line item transfer worm. The line item transfer oh, yeah, policy. I'm sorry. That's the one I'm looking at. 
the, so the uh, capital improvement capital improvements line item transfer okay. policy. Yeah. So that you want them to go to, so before a purchase is made, it has to go to the home committee, is what you're what you're mm, approving. That's not what I thought. Oh, okay. No. Okay. All right. I thought you want you want to get rid of the paperwork. We don't have. It right we don't now. have it right now, but there there was some discussion at at the executive committee that they want to go back to that that they feel that they that they've lost some control. That's home committees have lost some control. Oh, okay. So th do you want to go back to that? Do you want to return to that? Yes, I'll make the motion then. Okay. Okay, we have a motion by Weddy, second by, that would be ever Eckstein. Any questions? To go back to the what? Yeah, to go, so to go back. Mm -hmm. capital, go back to the capital purchases have to go to the home committee for approval. Um, if you didn't want to have a Limit? number on it. That would be the next yeah. part of it, yes. Yeah, first we, uh, we will <coughs> vote on this and then we'll discuss the number. Mayor. Don't the home committee already have to approve the budget when the, the money is put in the budget? So I don't know why they would have to, they'd have to approve it again. I thought they would have to follow the budget closer than that. Yeah, so let's 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 separate because it's two separate issues here. So capital pa capital purchases. So yes, Mr. Tim, in your budget you have a line item for capital equipment or whatever, and so you know it's three thousand dollars during the budget process. You talk to your committee. You say I need to do this. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second that that this has to go to the home committee at the time before they make the purchase. Does everyone understand? Yeah. We're voting. talking about what is in the line item. We haven't gotten to the line yeah. item. Yeah, two separate, two okay. separate things, okay. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So now I need to know what's the magic number. At what point do you need to know what, at what point do you need to know this? Yes. $5,000. And a motion? Do you want to make that a motion? Yes. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion by Eckstein, second by Bob Jones. Is there any discussion on that? If they have a ticket item, it's going to be over $5,000. Over $5,000. They're going to come to the home committee before they, order. before they buy it or whatever, mm -hmm. whether it be a car, drug, life, or whatever. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so now the second part of this is the line item. So you have these line items that in salary you have, you know, $30,000. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give throw this out for an example because it's very it's a very easy one. So jury jury's expenses. So is Missy out there? <laughs> so we just we just talked about this today. So you could have one jury trial that could blow that number right out of the water. So in the past she's been able to just look at the bottom line as long as she didn't overspend that bottom line. <coughs> everything was kosher. Okay, everything was cool. So do you want to change that? So if she has an expense in one line item, does she have to come to the committee and say, I'm going to be over here, can I draw from this, from something, from a different area? So, I mean, that is a, it is a change. It's going, that's what we did years and years and years ago. Donna Teschner would spend a lot of time making all those adjustments and is it just busy work or is it really doing what you want it to do? So do they need to come to you if they're going to be over in one area and want to draw from a different area or is the bottom line all that you really are worried about? Um, does that allow them to 
then to spend it to say, okay, I don't think I want to spend it here. I'd rather spend it there. Can they do that then without even? That's what we're asking you. If in the committee? That's what we're asking you. Mm -hmm. I know we have no loose cannons here, but still, as far as somebody deciding that they know better than the committee. Right now, that's how it is. That's if what we're asking you. But I, I can give you a reverse of this. But the different example is that we know we were in the middle of a lawsuit right now. Mm -hmm. I get a bill for six thousand dollars. My litigation budget is six thousand dollars for the whole year. I've spent some of that on other cases. Where do I get that six thousand dollars? I'm going to take it out of my office equipment mm -hmm. budget because I have five hundred dollars in my office equipment budget that I can pillage some from there. I can pillage some from the phone expense because we didn't make as many calls. I can pillage some from office. Mm -hmm. But do I have to come back to you to say, I want to take $200 out of this line item, $200 out of this line item, $200 out of this item, and add them to this line item mm -hmm. to pay this bill? I guess the part of the question would be then, does the committee want to be bothered with all this? Many Correct. Of this stuff? Correct. Uh, and, uh, so I'm not saying that, you know, as a home committee, that department head isn't going to come to you and say, I have this issue. Okay. I know I'm going to be over in this area. I'm not, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about do you n really need to know every place that we're drawing this money from? Or we don't get to draw it from this, and Ruth's going to say, you need to take 6000 out of surplus now because I have this expense. We don't have a choice. We've got to pay it. So, I mean, which way do you, yeah, which way do you want to go with this stuff? So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good. That's good. You did that very well, Evan. <laughs> um. I can't foresee the uh, uh, the um, uh, department heads doing this unless it's necessary. Well, you, you've taken care of some of it in that you've said, okay, you can't have a capital purchase without clearing. So you've taken care of some of this issue. You know, yeah, but you can't just spend special it. circumstances like you would have with a jury trial and stuff like that. You know, I can't see where that would be abused. <coughs> Donna, you deal with it every day. I, uh, liquor was budgeted, and I know how they budget. There is nothing I can do about a small budget like Cook County. The people of Cook are just going to go where they tell them to be there. Sure is for issue. Still have Does the just the idea that they have to get capital purchases approved in advance? Does that address some of that? Because wouldn't they? Be able to tell where they're going to get their money from if they don't have it. We, we were talking there that the budget was six thousand on that line item that was going to cost us six thousand dollars. That's already budgeted. The the, depart, um, the home committee approved the budget, so they can <coughs> spend that money there. That that's fine. It's when So 
I think we're taking care of that issue because they have to get home committee approval before they that's purchase. all I'm worried about. It doesn't make sense. It's kind of stuff that, you know, $50 is one line item for another okay. section. Okay. Bottom line is all I look at. Uh, I mean, I'm driving my, I had patients up to Wazoo with all this stuff up there. So they might have said, you know, you don't have to do that, but look at the bottom line. When she refers to Michael, she's talking about Michael Konechny, who's the auditor. I guess just in a case scenario of what Ruth said, if you were overspent that six thousand, all of a sudden you got another one that's going to cost you ten thousand. All you'd have to do is ask the county board, tell them I, I spent my money, I need this money, your budget's not going to handle it. All you do is come back to county board and ask for more money because you had to spend it on that trial. Right. I mean, if you if the case was your budget wasn't going to make the bottom line, and you know it's not going to happen, right? You can come and ask us. When there's right. But I would rather see it known before December than if you can know it's going to be in October or September. Let us know about it before the end of the year. If your budget's not. 